Have you ever wondered what the best path to take is when reaching out to music supervisors? Well, we certainly have. So we sat down with a conversation with one of the leading music supervisors today, PJ Bloom. We discussed the best ways to reach them, as well as what his advice is to those who want a career in music supervision, and much, much more. Coming up. This episode of the Mubu TV Insider Video Series is brought to you by the Music Business Registry. The Music Business Registry is the leading music industry publisher of the most up-to-date contact information for major and independent record label A&R, music publishers, artist managers, music attorneys, music supervisors, and much, much more. The Music Business Registry is the trusted industry standard and source serving the music business community for over 30 years with the most accurate and up-to-date contact information available. Their titles include the a &R Registry, the Film and Television Music Guide, the Music Publisher Registry, and the Music Attorney Registry. All of their publications are available in PDF, CSV, or online subscription. Visit musicregistry.com and use coupon code MUBUTV10 at checkout. That's musicregistry.com, coupon code MUBUTV10. When you're ready to put your music to work, musicregistry.com. Hi, we're back live from Sync Summit on day two, and we managed to catch up with one of the top music supervisors, PJ Bloom, which I'm thrilled to introduce you to. PJ, thanks so much for doing this. Thanks, really Rich. It. Always good to see you. It's good to see yeah. you too. You know, one of the things I've always wondered about music supervision is how are music supervisors chosen uh, from a project? Are they chosen by the network, by the producer, by the... Director, how, how does that work or does it work different in different mediums? Uh, it happens in a variety of different ways. Um, the, the way it happens most often is that is that a, a director or producer or some key executive member of the production staff has a relationship with the music supervisor. Um, and uh, they, we come in that way. Um, sometimes if there's a need for a music supervisor and a director and a producer doesn't have a relationship with one, then the studio and network will, will come in and uh, make recommendations and those recommendations are, are either made by uh, the creative needs of the show. If a music supervisor has a particular skill set, like, you know, is really good with on-camera music or knows a lot about hip hop, uh, or if uh, if that music supervisor has a, a, a deep relationship with that studio and, you know, that person's worked a lot there and they, they trust that uh, they'll do the job, they come in that way. Okay. Yeah. Can you talk about what a typical day in your work day would be like? What, what, what are the things that you're doing? Uh, or does it depend on what you're working on? Yeah, it's different every day, which, okay. which for me is one of the most exciting things about it. I never really know what the day is going to bring. Um, it, it definitely entails listening to music, mm -hmm. um, talking on the phone a lot. We're, we're going to recording sessions. We're going to spotting sessions. We're, uh, you know, on set at the studio. Um, I'm taking a lot of meetings. We're doing a lot of paperwork, a lot of clearance, a lot of budget management, uh, dealing with a lot of legal issues, dealing with record companies, dealing with uh, music publishers, managers, agents. Um, you know, the, the, the great thing about music supervision and one of the things that I love most about it is it really sits in a very centralized place within the music industry. So we touch so many different parts of it. Um, and now um, with, um, you know, different different branding and the cross collateral is uh, excuse me, cross collateralization of uh, promotion and marketing. We're having more conversations with with radio departments and, you know, digital media and um, social outreach um, and a lot of different a lot of different things that, uh, you know, we didn't touch 10 years ago. Uh, but we, you know, there's so many things that we're doing and, and um, you know, a, a lot of it is listening to music and discovery, but there's, there's a ton of other stuff that happens every day. Yeah. It seems like the whole, I guess, media world has expanded, especially online and in other platforms as mm -hmm. well, yeah. besides just television or film. Yeah. So. With, without a doubt. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, when you're, when you're making a film, you're not just, it's not just airing on a big screen and that's, that's your only consideration. Or if you are, if you are making a television show, your only concern is not not just the network that it's going to air on. There are all these other ancillary platforms that we're that we're touching and that we're dealing with, and that we have to be attentive to when we're uh, when we're working within our 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 field. Okay, yeah, you're the music supervisor for the massive hit, massively big show uh, Glee, and one of the things that I want to ask you about because it's an interesting aspect. There's a lot of live performance or performance of music on camera on the show. And I'm curious, as a music supervisor, do you have to clear all of that 
prior to shooting or does it happen in, in after the fact? Well, uh, it's, it's, it's for the most part, all of the performances, well, if for all of it, uh, all performances are cleared, um, in pre-production, which is, which okay. is very unique to Glee. Right. Um, and, and, and I would say unique to any other performance show like Nashville does the same thing. You know, if 80% of the time on a normal scripted television show or, or even reality or cable, you are dealing with music clearance in post-production after the film is mm-hmm. shot, after the television show is, is shot shot and we're constructing it in post 80 90 percent of of it is handled there with with glee and these performance-based shows you know we have to know the music that we're using we have to write write it into the script we have to go into choreography rehearsals we have to do you know you know do lighting and set and blocking and 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 recording of the songs in uh, you know in pre-production so by the time we actually get to set and shoot that first frame all of that stuff is front loaded so the you know the actors know what they're singing the cameramen know what to shoot the dancers know how to dance um and that is that's fairly unique to glee and shows like um, you know, it's not typically like that in most in most music supervision cases. OK, well, let me ask you something else. The, the, the trend that I've noticed and you've been doing music supervision for quite a number of years. And one of the things I've noticed is that over the last, let's say, 10, 12 years in the music supervision world, it seems like television shows, films, commercials seem to be open to a much wider variety of independent music coming into the fold than they were 10, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. What is it that you feel has contributed to that openness in, 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 in music today? Because it used to be just mainly iconic songs or very, very big songs that everybody knew. Now that doesn't seem to be the case at all. I think that, um, I think that brands want to play that A&R role. Um, I think that's not just reserved for, uh, major record companies or, ma- or major publishers and classic songs anymore. I think, I think brands want to have that sense of discovery and I think they want, to have that cool sheen with their consumer base. Um, you know, a lot of that, you know, Apple had a lot to do with that, you know, breaking artists in their, in their, you know, early ads, Volkswagen had a lot to do with that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, you know, I certainly see the trend, um, where, where brands, you know, they, they want to take a role in, in breaking independent music. They want to have, they want to be identified with, with not just selling their product, but also, also taking that A&R role. Um, you know, and, and, and frankly, it's, it's, it's difficult to do business with the major labels. You know, it's, it's expensive. It's time consuming. There are, are, you know, layers of red tape and Malico that exists. Um, especially, you know, the bigger the opportunity and oftentimes in these, in these branding, branding with these branding opportunities, they are quite large. So people think, you know, and overthink very, very distinctly about, about how those opportunities are going to manifest themselves. And, you know, oftentimes it's just easier for independent artists to do that. Their organizations are smaller. Oftentimes it's person to person. Um, they, they appreciate the income, they want the money and they want the exposure. Um, so I think that that has a lot to do with it as well. Just the, the, the ease of use and the ease, the ease of those deals. Um, but, but primarily, I think it's a creative thing. I think it's exciting for these brands to use independent music. I think it's less exciting to use, you know, the biggest song from 1973 to sell cat food. I don't think that's, I don't think it's as necessary. And frankly, it's very expensive to do that. Right. You know, you work on a variety of things. And I was wondering if you could tell us, like, what are some of the projects that you're currently working on or that you have upcoming? Well, my company, Neophonic, um, you know, we are one of the largest music supervision firms in the country. So we are doing about 20, 25 different projects at, at, at any given time. Um, I personally run Glee, American Horror Story, Banshee, The Americans. Um, we also have a longstanding relationship with HBO. We've had a joint venture with them for about seven. 17 years. So we are their de facto music department. Um, we, we do all of their films, touch all of their mini, mini series and, and work on a lot of their original programming, which is the, which are the episodic shows as well, like mm-hmm. uh, Game of Thrones, Boardwalk Empire, uh, True Blood. Um, so if we're not supervising it proper and there is another music supervisor on the show, like Gary Calamar is with True Blood, we act in sort of an executive role you know, just to kind of look at everything and make sure it's running and, and functioning well. But, um, you know, through that HBO relationship, we do a, t- a ton of projects with incredible directors, incredible producer, producers and actors all the time. Uh, we also do a lot of uh, ad work as well. 
Uh, we've been we've been doing some some brand direct work with uh, Friskies, uh, Nestle Purina, which has been very exciting. Um, we've dabbled a bit in video games, um, you know, a little, little bit in, in, in web-based, uh, web-based content. Um, you know, we like to consider ourselves a full service company. We have a staff of eight, which is rather large for a music supervision company. Most people are doing it out of a single office or out of their, out of their garage. Um, our, our operation does it differently, but, you know, because of that, we're, we're able to do a, a lot of content and, um, incredible productions come through Nail Pond. That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. It seems like, yeah, the expansion has been way beyond just film or television. So yeah, it's good. And and and, and honestly, you know, we uh, when especially with the HBO role, we we oftentimes when we play that executive that executive role, we oftentimes are the people that hire music supervisors. So it's fun for us as music supervisors to be able to spread it out to other music supervisors. Today, you know, you have so much music available. You have so much music coming at you. I guess you know you must get asked this a lot, but. In terms of people that are looking to reach a music supervisor such as yourself, what path would you say is really the best thing for them to do? Is it direct? Is it through libraries? Is it through other relationships? How, what, what advice do you give on that? I personally prefer these placement organizations or sync agencies. Um, you know, these are third party aggregators who serve to, to help the licensing community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are so busy all day long, you know, providing the service that we're asked to do for directors and producers and studios and networks. Our, our day is, is, is essentially, you know, it's, it's, it's about time management. So in the spirit of time management, if I'm looking for a song, it's difficult for me to reach out to one individual independent artist who has a single album of 12 songs and hoping that one of those songs on that album is going to be the exact thing that I need for, for a scene. It's a much better use of my time to reach out to, to a placement company and say, this is what I'm looking for. They can then reach out to their 500 bands and their 50,000 songs, do the, do, the, do the creative search for me, and then send back a comprehensive playlist based on my creative criteria. On top of that, they have a lot of experience in doing business in the sync world. Um, they speak my language. They understand the legal and business affairs uh, process, mm -hmm. uh, which often doesn't exist with, with individual artists. You know, artists are busy being artists as they they right. should be, you know, they, right. and artists aren't always the best business people. So the sync agencies and aggregators um, serve a creative purpose for me and they serve a great business purpose for me. Um, so I prefer to do business in that realm. It's, it's easier, efficient, and, and they're, they're really great high quality music coming out of those places. A lot of people watching, you know, dream of being music supervisors. They want to do what you do. And a lot of people, I think, have a misconception of what a music supervisor in terms of the skill sets actually does. They think it's just somebody who has incredible knowledge of music and, you know, can come up with ideas. I mean, that's what you most commonly hear. What advice would you give to people who want to pursue that as a profession, music supervision as a profession? My advice would be learn the business side of it. Being creative and being passionate about music is is obviously critical, and and at its core, that's a wonderful thing. But there's a lot of people who know a lot about music. You know, my plumber knows a lot about music. It doesn't make him a great music supervisor. What makes you a great music supervisor is your ability to to execute the creative ideas that you have and serve the creative needs and the business needs of the people that hire you. Um, it's not about just just coming up with great song ideas. It's about understanding how to execute those, those ideas, which has a lot to do with, uh, you know, legal copyright, publishing, um, you know, record company politics, uh, money management, um, there's there's technical issues. Um, you know, you also have to be a master of, of, of two very different fields. One is music and the other is production. So, you know, the, the, the creative aspect of it all is the sexy part but i don't think that's what makes you a great music supervisor and i know that's not what gets you hired what gets your hot what gets you hired is your ability to execute not only your ideas but the ideas of others and do it efficiently and on time and 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 on budget wow some great insights from bj especially for those of you that are looking to place your music into film and television so insiders here's the question of the day what did you feel were the most valuable insights in our conversation with PJ? Was it the best path to take when reaching music supervisors? Or was it the advice he had for those wanting to pursue music supervision as a career? Or maybe it was something else that connected with you.
Do you have any experiences or ideas that have worked for you that you'd like to share regarding this topic? We'd love to hear from you and connect in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to Mubu TV for more information on how to educate, empower, and engage your music career. In addition, we recently put together a free guide on the best strategies to use when contacting music supervisors. This is extremely important before submitting your music for any film or TV show. So if you're interested in receiving it, we've included a link to that in the description below. It's totally free and it goes through the top do's and don'ts before you even think about submitting your music out to music supervisors. Questions such as asking yourself, is all the correct metadata and correct information included into my music? Have I checked the links to any music that I'm submitting to make sure that they are working? Are your sync and master rights of the recording and song pre-cleared? This is a valuable guide into learning the art and etiquette of submitting your music to music supervisors and to the community, one that you can't afford to be without. So if you're interested in receiving that, we'll link in the description below. You can also check out a summary of this episode and everything we talked about in the description as well. And if you enjoyed this video, we'd really love it if you hit the like button and let us know what other kinds of videos and types of content you want to see on our channel. Hit us up in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video.